been amazing. And so I came home and started to do a bit of uh, fundraising and things like that with some of my friends in this small community. And they've all been really good. Yeah. I've hit them up a few times. <laughs> yeah, you did an amazing fundraiser. Uh, was that earlier this year? Oh, yeah, the Zoom one. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> it's super fun. What did you do? Tell people briefly. Um, well, so, yeah, we had a Zoom call in our friends. It was just a party with friends, but they didn't really know what we were going to do, me and my friend. So we kind of, we dressed up in drag him as a woman and me as a man and then we had a telethon and yeah just it was super fun people instantly were donating money and yeah we exceeded for sure what we thought we could accomplish out of that so yeah it was great thanks Lori. yeah and yeah, we've got a uh, emmanuel's on now and ingrid and randy and sage Hi, everybody yeah welcome great to see you guys <laughs> great to see you made it Yay! <laughs> That's great. Oops. Didn't didn't have to travel far, Larry. <laughs> Not these days, huh? For this. Um, well, and Emmanuel, I really want to welcome you in. And uh, I don't know if people have seen that uh, you had a big event yesterday. And um, Emmanuel, you want to tell people what happened? Can you hear me? Or you? I see you're working on your earbuds there. Can you hear me, Emmanuel? Let's see. Okay, it looks like he's still getting connected up. Oh, hello. Hello, Emmanuel, there, there you are. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, wow. Good evening, good morning, everyone. Morning. Wow, hey, welcome all. <coughs> to see you all. Wow. Wow. Congratulations, Emmanuel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So what uh, what's the congratulations about here? Well, I'm happy to share with you. Uh, in 2012, I joined a program with um, Dalk Education Trust here in Kenya, in Malindi. And by then I was studying uh, community development uh, diploma. Just, just a minute. Okay. I wanna welcome in while we're waiting here. Uh, I'm not sure how we say your name, Karibai Bria? Israel, welcome in, uh, calling in from Uganda, uh, another farmer. And um, so our community continues to grow, first time here for- Oh, that is very exciting, welcome. <laughs> wow. Sorry, I'm just wanting to connect to Jessica here. Yeah, I'm Great. Okay. Um, so this will be Jessica's first time on these calls, and um, when she gets on, we'll welcome her in. Again, feel free to use the chat. That's not something we've done in the past, um, particularly, but uh, introduce yourself or where you're from or connect with people as you might wish. And... Um, Hmm, okay. Another. Uh, welcome to Hakura. I'm not sure how you say your name. Can you can you hear me? Okay. Are you Kura? Connecting his audio.
Hello, is that you, Jess Carr? Hello, Larry. <laughs> Jessica, hello. Hello, how are you? I'm very good. It's wonderful to have you on the call here. Hello. <laughs> Hey, I just wanted to say I, the cricket sound is kind of cute while we're waiting. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey, hello, hello, everyone. How hello. are you? Welcome, Jess Carr. Thank you so much. I'm here. Yes, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Will Emmanuel be able to be on also? He's still connecting. He's still connecting. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, hello. Oh. Emmanuel, yes. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? I can, yes. Hello. Yes, Emmanuel. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes. Is this uh, Harukua? He, he, he can't hear you. He can't hear me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Maybe we can use just the same. Uh, I'm not sure if I can do anything what? here. Maybe we can just connect to the I one. So. I'm on a call then. We use one one ear. Use one inner ear each. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that is partnership. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Yes, Emmanuel. yeah, I was uh, I was sharing about my graduation that happened on fourth of uh -huh. uh, this month, and I had started that uh, in the year 2012. I joined a program uh, for diploma in community development. It was a professional diploma in community development, which I graduated in uh, 2015. And in 2015, I enrolled myself with a bachelor program that could take me maybe three years, but uh, because of uh, uh, slow and also uh, not managing uh, to finish my modules early, it took me even longer, but uh, I finished uh, uh, this year because there was a lot of time to do that. And uh, I submitted, and uh, then uh, I managed to be having my graduation this year. Having so my graduation so this year for for the diploma or for the bachelor in arts, uh, community development and resource mobilization. So I graduated with uh, the the degree. Uh, on 4th of uh, this month, that was Friday. So Friday is uh, so, one of my memorable day. So thank you so much. I have seen so most of you have commented on that. So, so thank you so much. It's very exciting and congratulations, Emmanuel. Thank you. It's, it's thank a big you. deal. Um, it's a big synchronistically, the um, for the for the center to shift to um, the community trust format, as I understand it, the director must. Uh, by the way, you might reach yourself. If, um, let's see, we're getting some background noise. So if you're not talking, maybe try and mute yourself. Ground. Okay, thank you. Where that came from. Um, okay. Where that came from. 
Anyway, the director, the, the government requires that the director of the have a bachelor's degree. So Emmanuel now has a bachelor's degree. Um, it's a great synchronicity. Uh, anticipated. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to send a message here and see if. Um, so, for the format of these calls, we, we usually start with a, sort of a moment of silence here and, and here someplace. Just giving a lot of feedback. Um, and, and As the host, can you not just mute everybody and then they can go in when they want to speak? Trying to, I'm not allowed to. I can mute some people, it comes up, but it doesn't come up everywhere. Okay. Maybe that's it. Maybe we got it. Um, so these calls are, are really a celebration of life, right? I mean, this is, and it's such a sweet community that comes together around this and this reconnecting to ourselves and reconnecting to the earth and through the love of the children and the inheritance that we pass to them around the globe. And so let's just take a moment and drop into silence together for just a few a brief time and, and listening in for our own intentions and listening in for the highest um, collective good that can emerge from this call for all of us and, and for the planet and the children of the future. Thank you for that. It always helps me. Yeah. Uh, so normally we sort of start with a report out from you, Emmanuel, about what's been happening and going on. And now that we have uh, you, Jessica, on the line too, want to make sure we create and hold space to, to hear from you. As we move towards the end of the call, then we sort of invite in just more reflections beyond the news of what's happening at the center. And this is the sort of we move towards the end of the calendar year, but also the beginning of the new year, a time when so much is going on around the planet um, and from COVID to uh, economic issues, et cetera, and climate. Maybe um, I'll let Emmanuel and Jessica I'll let you guys juggle how you wanna respond to this, but what kind of news from the end of the year or what's your reflections that you'd like to share about what's been happening, is happening at the center? Maybe just bring us up to date um, on that. Thank, thank you, Larry, for this time and this moment. And thank you for organizing these calls. Uh, I really appreciate and um, thank, you. thank you everyone for having the time and creating space to attend this meeting for the Magarini Children's Center and Organic Farming Demonstration Farm. I must say, I'm so much thrilled. Uh, thrilled. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you so much. Magarini Children's Center and Organic Farming, this year, as we all know, we have been uh, having the pandemic regardless of all the lockdowns and uh, restrictions in, in terms of a uh, community not moving from other place to other place and the government shutting down all the institutions learning institutions uh, we were not spared so we also closed our uh, our center in terms of uh, reallocating the children to the host families. But uh, at the same time, the children, you are always coming at the center and we have been having them every day 
uh, playing and also helping in the farm. And uh, with that, therefore, all the staffs, uh, meaning teachers and uh, other department joined with the community and we worked hard in the farm to produce food. With that, therefore, we had a good harvest as maybe I reported this in the last call. So we had a good harvest in terms of uh, uh, corn, especially corn, we had uh, uh, more than uh, eight, uh, eight uh, uh, bags of, uh, of corn. And I'm happy to all friends and a special stage who uh, sent money to us to buy storage for the corn. And now all the corn is uh, stored well for the children to use as food. And also we had a good harvest of cowpeas and vegetables. And uh, this is now continuous, is happening at the center uh, because uh, we also use the drip irrigation. We have we also started uh, the classroom building we, as we need a classroom. We for the next year we started uh, building the classrooms. Those are four classrooms with support from uh, One World. So we started. We took off the project. Uh, now we still need like um, uh, twenty uh thousand dollars to finish the the the, the classrooms project but uh, we are also working on uh, bringing wa uh, water in the water in the girls dormitory uh, and that we already received the support for that and um, we looking forward the this year in june not june in uh October, the government allowed two classrooms that, that was grade four and grade eight to be back in the uh, in the center for continuous learning. So we did learning, and uh, the, the government sent some exams for assessing all the children, and we worked this, and also we managed to supply all the exams for the children and they did well and um, this has been a quite a, 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 an achievement for, for for the center because in terms of working in the farm the children are doing so well in taking care of the soil but also they are growing uh, good in achievement academically according to the government uh, 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 curriculum or education. We also this we year, year we had a, a project that is a house for the chicken. So we built, we built the house and it was ready and then we brought the chickens at the, at the same. These chickens are layers, and they are going to lay eggs. We brought uh, 510 uh, chicks to the center, and now we lost like uh, 38 or 40, but uh, still we, we have almost uh, 400 and, uh, birds which remain. And uh, first, we, we brought the chicks and we were, the, the, we started giving them the uh, glucose. But uh, when we saw their mortality rate was increasing, we removed all the, the chemicals from them and we started giving them, uh, growing them uh, organically. Now we provide them with uh, garlic water and uh, this garlic water re re stops all the what that was happening. So now they are growing naturally as birds, as chickens, naturally, and the mortality has ceased. So we are happy also to have those uh, uh, chicks on, uh, on, uh, on board at the center. And the children are very happy because they also learn how to take care and protect these animals. So 
not to only care take care of the soil in the farm, but also taking care of able to take care of the of the animals that we have. We have the pigs now at the center, and also we have the the the, the chickens, and uh, we also have uh, we are starting a, a tree nursery a uh, 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 place where we are going to to plant or to make nursery in, a, in a, a tree nursery that we are looking forward to plant and this tree nursery is um, uh, like uh, to remember who our friend who passed uh, but, uh, but he came to the center and he trained us on uh, medicine medicine trees and uh, now we want to honor that by having a medical medicine tree plant plant uh, nursery. And we are going to share this with uh, our other schools and neighboring and also the community so that we can also be able to grow and plant many trees as possible in the coming rain season. So that is what we have been doing. And also I think Jessica will also share about the, um, the Madeluna project that we they make part. I think Jessica, you can share that and uh, how we want to progress with that. Okay, thank you so much everyone. And I say hi to you all. <laughs> okay, I want to share about this program of Matuluna. They are pads for women and girls. So I have, uh, we have been, we have been supported, supported by, by Jacqueline, Jacqueline and, and her, her friends. Friend. And we and started, started this program last year. Last year. Like and we wanted and to, want to give the girls and some women. We need more support with that because many women need the pads because as you know, maybe the friends who have been here in our center, the women and the girls have a very big challenge of getting these uh, pads from the shops which are very expensive and also they cannot uh, stay because if you buy one and you use it, you have to throw it. But these ones which we make, they are durable and also friendly to the environment. So we have been giving the girls, we have been supporting them, but more girls also need those pads because we give only at the center, the, the girls at the center and there are some women but we need to go far and to the other schools also to support because we have challenges like our girls get pregnant because they go for men maybe to get the pads. But if we get more support for these girls, then we can maybe help them and support them. So this is uh, another challenge which we have, but if we can get more, cha more support for these pads, because we are making them at the center, I make them with other women and then we distribute them to the girls and some women. So it also in the, in the farm, we have been doing good as the farm manager, we have some challenges, small challenges, but we are happy this year. We have uh, harvested much, as Emmanuel have already said. So I cannot maybe repeat that one. <laughs> Continue as well. I think you have understood from Emmanuel. So the, the big challenge which we have is the we need more support to make these materials to make the pads so as we can help these uh, girls, our girls. Mm. Thank you. Jessica, what is 
What do you mean you support? Do you need money for more materials or sewing machines or what is that? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I mean like um, Jacqueline usually bring us the support for the materials. So for us, we make, we make the part and then we distribute to the girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that one, we cannot reach many girls. We just give the girls at the center and some other women, but not many. We cannot go for many because we don't have that support. But for me, how much money uh, do you need, Jessica? How, ma how much yes, money do you money? need, Jessica? Maybe I don't know the money which I can. Maybe Manuel can help me because uh, usually, like uh, Jacqueline brings us thirty thousand Kenyan shillings. So, and that one can serve like uh, 30 girls. Yeah. So maybe if we can reach more girls around our area or in the community, then it will be also good. Yeah. Maybe to add on that. Uh, let's see, Emmanuel, I think I have you. On... Yeah. I think, Emmanuel, you're muted. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, I was, uh, I was saying that uh, maybe just an idea came and uh, maybe we have only we have two sewing machines for for the pads or washable and reusable pads that uh, Jessica and other women are using but uh, most recently this year there have been a, a lot of uh, cases about girls not uh, having these uh, uh, pads and uh, with this they, be, they became more even vulnerable to other problems like early pregnancies and uh, we thought maybe if it can be possible we can reach uh, more girls ex uh, especially within our center first of all and then uh, we can as well support or help the girls within the community or within other neighboring uh, uh, schools to share this and also to learn or together with them because of uh, the most important of using this reusable uh, uh, sanitary towels because they are also friendly with the environment and once they learn this, I think it will be also very helpful. Uh, in a way, we shall be having reducing some of the environmental issues. And I think that's uh, what was uh, Jessica trying to, to, to explain or to tell about the production. She wants to produce more pads to reach more children and community, especially the single mothers who also do come at the center and uh, they work by making this helping making these um, pads so once we can produce more these single mothers can be having also a source of income to support themselves so that is the uh, uh, amadeluna project uh, with uh, jacqueline and yami from argentina whom they came and supported and trained us, or especially the girls at the center and the women from the community. So I just wanted to add that and uh, welcome you all if you have any questions regarding the activities that has been happening at the center. And uh, also this year we, we, this year we nominated one of our staff the farm from the farm department 
to go to Japan to learn more about uh, sustainable agriculture and uh, leadership. So the program took uh, takes like uh, nine months. So the Asian Rural Institute, uh, after uh, sending our request, then they, they agreed to give him a full scholarship for travels, for staying, and also for the full course for the nine months. And uh, we are expecting uh, him, his name is Malimu, we are expecting him back uh, this month uh, on the 12th or not, on the 18th. So he will leave uh, in Japan on the 18th and hopefully he will be here in the 19th of this month after graduating for the sustainable agriculture. Why we did that is because we need more, more people who will be having all this knowledge because we have some people who want to they come at the center, they want to learn, and uh, we need more people who are experienced so that uh, they can train those who need to come and learn at the center. So we have uh, Malimu Mzungu Shehe, who uh, is in Japan. We nominated him so that he, when he come back, he can be able to support also in the farm as we grow. Great. Such a um, great worthwhile project. Um, you know, and I'd be curious too, and, and Emmanuel and Jessica, I, it seems like we need to mute one of you uh, to help reduce the, um, the feedback. So that's sort of, if you don't think to mute yourselves that way, I'm, I'm trying to do it also here. But I'd be curious, Jessica, in particular, and Emmanuel, you can kick in on this too, but to speak about what difference does this schooling that you provide makes for the, for the young girls as women in Kenya growing up. Um, it just seems, to, it's an enormous piece. And um, does that make sense as a question? Have you understood the question, Jessica? No. Yeah. Um, let's see, I don't know if I can unmute you, Jessica. I'm just asking about what difference the schooling provides for the young girls as, as budding women there in, in Kenya. And uh, I mean, they're gaining a formal education, but they're also gaining an education in, in agriculture and how to take care of the land and take care of themselves. Um, it seems to me it makes a huge difference in their capacity for financial independence and um, their ability to take care of themselves as they grow. Is that, would you care to speak to that? Yes. Does that make sense then? Um, I think what you are saying, Larry, is um, very noble because um, at the center, the main vision is to take care of the orphan and vulnerable children and also to help them become even safely reliant when they leave the center and also when they become uh, adults. They can also depend on themselves like uh, trying to have the skills that they can take care of themselves. They can produce uh, uh, healthy food by using the skills they learn uh, uh, at the center, that is the organic farming skills. And uh, the main difference that we, we can differentiate ourselves from the other institution and the girls and the boys that we have at the center is that um, maybe Jessica will speak more, uh, more about the girls, but may speak generally that um, the boys and the girls that are growing at the center, they not only benefit or learn from the, for the government curriculum to achieve academically, 
and uh, that is one that is one but what makes the difference is that uh, the children that we have first of all they they come and uh, to be allowed by the government to have them we ought to abide by the government rules and regulations and we had to provide the education but our main aim was to let these children grow with awareness that the food that they eat they come from the soil and once they pro protect and take care of the soil then they are taking care of themselves and this when they grow with their, as they grow with this in their mind then uh, for me i say they grow peacefully and this kind of uh, of uh, of education or of learning especially at the farm we don't provide books for that but we learn by doing we know we know that once we do together with the children they understand even more because once they want to do they just do it because they have been doing it and uh, learning with uh, taking care of animals and um, planting trees we believe trees are partners in life because they do a lot in our livelihood only that we lack awareness especially maybe in our community because for the previous years people have been uh, cutting trees to make charcoals but now after creating the awareness and the importance of having trees and planting trees this um, culture has reduced uh, 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 very big and um, that's why we find the the government officials from the environment congratulating us we have the government uh, teachers from the other schools congratulating us then the officer congratulating us before we were we were a bit like mm, uh, maybe they are going to stop us but now they even said uh, gave us the provisional uh, certificate to in real, to recognize our institution as a learning institution and uh, unique uh, uh, learnings is happening there. So that is uh, what we have been managing and what have been able to provide and making a difference. For the girls, I think uh, Jessica uh, can speak more because uh, for like almost these, um, these um, uh, three months, we have been staying at the center uh, we sleep there, we stay there. So Jessica has been staying with the girls all the time. So maybe he can uh, know and can share a little bit more about that. Okay, to add on that, I say thank you again for, for coming back. So these girls, I'm happy for these girls this year, although we have been uh, having this challenge of pandemic, but uh, because I used to talk to the girls always, we all the girls are safe and at the, our center. Only other areas, like other schools, we have been ha having some many cases of the early pregnancy. But uh, at in my center or at our center, we are so happy, and I'm happy to say to you, our friends, that our children are very safe. They are all well. And I think this is because of always our friend, we talk about you, our friends, and always I advise them about life. Um, so I'm happy because I, that is the difference from other schools and our center. That's beautiful, Jessica. In the, in the farm, we have been continuing working with the community as we, maybe some of you know, that uh, this year we also shared some seeds and, uh, and uh, the community have food too, because with the seeds that we provided, uh, they grew food and they have food, but they have been also continuing coming to the center, working together and learning together so right now, maybe we have almost uh, the, 
maybe uh, be mid of this month, we are we are going to harvest our fourth our fourth generation of corn that uh, we planted this year. So this year we have almost four four four. We have five we shall be harvesting corn for almost four, four times. So that means we are adding the food that we already have. That's great, Emmanuel. Um, we have uh, some folks on the call. Barbara, I just happen to have your face on my screen here. It looks like you're ready to say something. Yes, I, Jessica, <laughs> I just wanted to ask you, um, did I get that right, that you really moved to, to the farm for, for some time now? And uh, how come you did that? Was, it, was there so much work or what made you move to the center? I can't hear you. I hear you, I see you speak, but I can't hear you at this moment. Uh, let's see if I can do anything. Um... Yeah, Jessica, you're okay. Can, can you hear me now, Bobby? Yeah, now I can. Yeah, now I can hear you. <laughs> oh, now it's muted again. Oh. I, I'm staying at the center because uh, of the work at the, the farm, also, and making the pads. And also, I want to, to stay with the girls. Nia, I mm -hmm. want to be very close to them and also always we talk maybe at night after preps we pray together then they go to sleep like that so they feel that they have their mother very near mm -hmm. Wow. and also the traveling every morning I decided not to do that so I just stay there yeah that sounds great. And also they feel that they, they, their mother is near, so they feel happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Thanks. You're welcome. And then, then there's one more question. Um, in the farm, like, um, did you, like being there, did you experiment with something? Did you try out something new um, with the yes. farming? Mm -hmm. Yes. Can can you share a little bit what's what's going on on the fields besides corn planting? Uh, we have a lot of vegetables, mm -hmm. like kales. We have onions. I've tried to plant also carrots. Now they are starting. Mchicha, brinjols, okras. So we have by uh, many vegetables. Garlic also I've tried. It is now growing. Garlic. Yes. <laughs> and ginger. Mm, that's great. Yes. <laughs> and and I imagine the the um, eatable forest. It has grown too. Does it already have fruits? Yes. We have uh, bananas now. We are cutting banana. We're harvesting bananas now. We eat a uh, popos. The popos are ready. LK popos mm -hmm. are ready here. <laughs> Sugar cane. <laughs> that, that's amazing. So we we that, have a that, lot of fruits now. Yeah, it's amazing. It, <laughs> it, it, it's not more than a year that, that Brandon planted that with mm -hmm. everyone. La Wonderful. Last year, September. Yeah. Amazing. It's growing so fast. Yes. We we realized that um the the, the catchment the water catchment that uh Brandon uh trained us on uh, on how to catch uh groundwater is really really uh working well because once the rains, all we, all the water is collected in the swells, and then uh, it takes very long time to become dry. So these swells are so 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 important, and uh, they are doing so so well. So this has been uh, one of our greatest uh, uh, experience, and we are making in uh, with uh, the permaculture. 
So the permaculture uh, learnings brought the food, the food forest and uh, the swells and the growing of trees within the, the, the farm. And this has been happening under uh, the papaya, bananas, uh, sugar cane, and uh, uh, moringa, all these are happening at the center. But uh, what is really, really because but now with the swells and with this year's rainfall, then we, we still we have a very good uh, 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 water catchment. I just wanted to add that, please. Awesome. We've got questions coming up. What are pawpaws? Pawpaws? Pa papaya. Papaya. Okay. Yeah. I think we have uh, we have Malimu who is in Japan. I think she he is here and. Uh, Maybe he can say hi. Wonderful. Thank you for joining, Malim. Thank you. So, and how do you say your name? Malimu. Maleni. Hi. Malimu. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear Yes, that was good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hello, yes. Wonderful Hello. to have you here. Uh, thank you, everyone. I'm joining this meeting. It's it's night now, around uh, 2 a.m., but um, I managed to join. <laughs> so uh, my name is Malim, and I work in that Magarini Children's Center and Organic Farming Demonstration Farm. I'm in the farm section, and uh, right now I'm in Japan to take more knowledge about organic farming that cares for the soil and our bodies too. And I'm really much impressed in the amazing training which is going on here. Right now it's finished, but the knowledge that I acquired right now, I feel it's amazing and I can make more changes back in, in my Magarini Children's Center with the children and the community too. That's wonderful. Um, Thank you. Well, Lenny, we're really glad you joined us here today. And yeah, good, best of luck with your studies there. Um, so, and Emmanuel and Jessica have also studied uh, there in Japan. Yeah. Um, so this is a great part of the network that is happening. Yes. I was there in 2009. And Jessica? I was there in 2013. And Malimu, you are there 2020. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, I know uh, Kibera, I don't know how to say his name, asked to speak. And uh, I'm hoping to hear from him also. We haven't heard from him. Right. Thanks, Sage. Um, he's muted. I'm going to oh. ask him. Um, okay. If the rest of us mute ourselves, uh, here a bit. Yeah, can you hear me? Uh, thanks everyone for welcoming me here, especially. Uh, I'm from Uganda, as you say, I'm in total darkness. You can't see me now, we don't have power here. Uh, I'm very glad to hear from my brothers of what project they are doing. 
and what they have reached on now. Uh, I'm just new here and I just got the information on my phone here today and I decided to join you. As me personally, I have a certificate in veterinary doctorate. And I wish next year if I get money to I will join my diploma next year, but I don't think I'll get. So please, my brother, I also have a in the agriculture like a plants. You can ask anything that, that can help you. I may hear, uh, I'm here and I'll be here, but whether it's animals or plants, I can help you. Even I created, I have, I also created a foundation. Uh, it's back to God Children's Foundation where I care for orphans, homeless, and they need. I don't stay with them, they are in the villages with them. But as I talk now, uh, they do lack some things, like uh, they lack uh, clothes, they lack uh, food due to this pandemic, and I, my works are. Uh, and I don't have so many works at this moment because of this pandemic, we are restricted from going some places. So that's the situation I'm in now, but I can help you, my brothers, majority, the major, is it majority, majority mixed and organic farming? Yeah, I can help you if you have anything that you wish. Thank you all. I'm Kilabila Israel. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much, Israel. And uh, don't give up. And I really appreciate your knowledge on uh, animals and agriculture and your willingness to help and support and uh, welcome on board. Thank you so much for sharing that and we can keep on touch. How many orphans do you support? I have like a, a Twenty as per now, I have you cut out when you were answering, your voice isn't working. Maybe you could write the answer to how many orphans you support in the chat. Are they boys and girls? Larry, you're muted. Good. 
<laughs> Randy, you had asked on the chat how many orphans are actually at the stain at the center. Uh, maybe Emmanuel or Jess Carr can speak to that. Um, Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, Emmanuel. Yeah, I have 20 orphans. I in that there are uh, 10 orphans, uh, five on a day, and the uh, five homelessness. The orphans I have just to their parents. They need that they have their parents, but the parents can't support them. Uh, and the homeless, I just got them on the streets. So that's how I'm standing by now. Thank you, Thank you Israel. Um, anyone else want to follow up with anything there before we move on? Emmanuel is there again now. You can give the number of kids at the center. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Larry, for asking, or Randy, sorry for asking. Uh, as per today, we have 56 total orphans. Uh, that boy, boys and girls. And we have um, our children from single mothers, uh, 110. And then we have, and then we have 90, uh, from uh, families that are, are headed by all the parents and uh, they don't have uh, food or, uh, or uh, means to get education. So we have the total number to 262. Great, thanks Emmanuel. Um, Can I just add one more thing? I just wanted to have a comment because I thought it was so important what Jess Carr said about that she wants the girls to have a mother on the farm. And for those of us who have been on the farm, um, we all know that, that Jess Carr and Emmanuel create a feeling of family on that farm. And it's the most beautiful thing to experience how the love that actually exists there. You know, you would think that a place like that with such destitute children and, and how difficult times the farm went through would be, you know, austere, but it is the, a place full of so much joy and connection and support that the, it's why when the children got sent back to their foster families, they refused to stay there during the day. They don't like being in the foster families because it's not home and they're not loved the way that they are on the farm. And I want to really appreciate you, Jessicar, that you actually moved there to take care of them so that they had a mother. For me, that is so heartwarming and it's the essence of what you and Emmanuel have created there, that it really is a place where these children, no, 262 kids, whatever you just said, they all refuse to stay home because the farm is their home and it's where they're loved. And I just wanted to highlight that for all of you who haven't been there, you have to go visit this place when COVID disappears to see what a remarkable feeling and beautiful place that they've created. <laughs> Thanks, Sage, for that beautiful testimony. I, well, I want to thank uh, Elke for 
the project that we did for the natural building last uh, last time we 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 organized a training that the training for natural building took place at the center and we were supported by lash and through this project we managed to buy two two tents from Nairobi and uh, these two tents one of it is our house the, that we use with Jessica when uh, we, we are there at the center. So I want to thank you, Elke, for that, for the effort and support, and uh, thank you so much. So when we go to the center, we have also a place to stay. Well, what occurred to me when Jessica said she's staying there, and so I thought, okay, it's time to build you a house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it's time. Yes, it's now time to have a house. <laughs> Now I'm living in. Hmm. Oh. Um, oh, here you so go. We've been on uh, just over an hour here. I want to remind people that we do have a fundraiser going under uh, the wild name of Children, Chickens, Cheer, and Classrooms. Oh my. Um, you can find it on my Facebook page, or uh, I'll be sending out emails again. Um, but anything people can do to help spread the word for that is wonderful, of course. It'd be nice to go into the new year with the foundations for the classrooms um, completed and moving towards, um, you know, con finishing that construction up. And also be working on the solar piece. Um, for proposal for that so that we can be looking to uh, bring power and light to the center. Mm -hmm. um, anyone else wanna, Barbara, your photo I came want, on my screen again, yeah? Emmanuel, I want, to, I want also to thank you uh, for everyone for the continued support, even this during the pandemic. I want to say you may not have, you may not know how much or a big difference to have done to the families of all those people who are working at the center because you have been continuing supporting with the salaries and uh, they have been getting salaries until to date. And I think this has made a very huge difference in terms of uh, our center and other institutions because uh, other institutions during the COVID, they had uh, completely uh, 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 locked down, but because we had the farm and uh, all the staff, we went back and we started working in the farm and you continued supporting with the salaries. I think you, that was very, very touching and moving because the family, these people who are working, at, the staff who are working at the center, they were able to support their families during this pandemic. So I want also to thank you so much for that. Well. Hmm. just feels really sweet to be together here um, in this stillness and silence for a moment. Um, I have one more thing to say. <laughs> Go say. I want to say just like the my appreciation for the family and the farm. We've ne I've never been on a call with so many people here before. It's a little awkward because we normally chat a lot, but there's so many people. I, Larry and I have been talking several times and saying how we, you know, there's been like a core of us holding this group together, um, and all of us a little freaked out all the time because of the needs are so big and they're constant and they never really stop, you know? <laughs> and Larry and I were saying, 
it's we need like a bigger family we need more people to get involved and we and so to see so many people on the call is so heartwarming that all of you cared enough to spend your Sunday morning here to listen to what's going on in the call and it gives me hope and it relieves a lot of the stress that you know I'm the one actually who raises the money for the salaries every month. And luckily I have a really um, committed group of people who do that, but it just to have a group of people that will show up and I, it relieves the stress that those of us in this core group sort of carry on our own. And so I wanna really, really thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for being here and all the support tonight. Recognize your names because you've been donating and coming through the International Peace I want to thank those donations, every one of them, $25, $100, $200, we got $1,000. It's really, uh, it, thank you. <laughs> Can you say where the fundraiser is at right now? What's that, Elke? What's the... I just checked it. I just checked it's at $1,600. Um, yeah, and we set a goal for 5,000 for this, hoping to do at least get the foundation complete and uh, keep it going. Um, Andrew, about taking a moment and um, Emmanuel, you and I were talking before and just to sort of wrap up this call with maybe a, a short reflection. Um, but you and I were talking about the soil as, as a, is a kind of inheritance that we give to our children. And the, the quality of the soil, the relationship with the soil, uh, the worldview of the soil, the living piece. And I wonder if you could just speak for a few minutes about that idea. You're muted, Emmanuel. Thank you, Larry, for, for saying that or mentioning that. And uh, I want to say that um, what here in our culture, what we know and what we have been growing out from before this formal education, people have been living depending on the soil and the soil has been supporting generation to generation. And uh, I came to learn that uh, as we take care and protect the soil, we not only protect our hearts or opening our hearts, but we are joining the soil in nurturing what is good for all of us. And I think if children can learn at early age on how to do this as they grow, then regardless of how much they achieve academically, but still they will have connected themselves to the earth and connecting themselves to the earth, to the soil, gives them the heart to listen, gives them the art to protect it so that they can pass it to the next generation. And I think as we live here on earth, generation come to pass, generation come to pass, but once one generation kills the soil, is killing the next generation. And uh, why I say so? I say so because I want to take my community in the last previous years after this formal education. There have been a mass tree cutting and destruction and people have seen those who have been using very much many uh, chemical fertilizers to grow food now the yields without fertilizers from the shops, they cannot grow. But once we 
protect the soil by not putting any chemicals, then the, the harvest or the yields is growing daily, uh, every time, every year is increasing, increasing. And uh, I speak this because of live experience that we have been experiencing. Manuel, you got muted again. When we let children inherit a little. You're back. You're good. Am I back? Okay. Yes, you're back. When we, I, I was saying that when we, when we, when the children inherit the love of just carrying the soil, the other love of caring for other people and building peace within their heart comes naturally. Mm -hmm. Caring for the existing environment, it, it also comes naturally. And this is happening because when, when you start to uh, associate with yourself with nature, nature associates herself with you and you become, you learn, and the more you learn, you understand the love of loving people and the love of loving nature, it's all together. So that's why I, when I say, when we inherit, we're inheriting or making the children to inherit the good soil is how they can protect and take care of the soil. And as they grow doing this, they can pass it to the next generation. That's beautiful, Emmanuel, thank you. Um, yeah, what a beautiful group of folks here. And uh, Noting the in the chat uh, here, Israel, your comment that your network is not much well and certainly can feel your heart and your presence here and the care that you are extending out. Emmanuel, I'm under wonder if you might um, or Jessica are having been through and not long ago and, and still struggling with your own for Margarini footing and financial stuff. Anything that you'd like to pass on and say to Israel at this point? Thank you, Israel. I've been to Uganda in 2009, right after coming from Asian Rural Institute. Uh, I managed to, I was hosted to go to Uganda and I know the environment and the people. We are, we have, we are almost in the same boat. And uh, I just love your spirit and care for humanity. And uh, right now, we all struggle in terms of financials, but I want to say, don't give up. And uh, I'm open for ideas and also sharing, uh, uh, giving mutual support in terms of uh, my experience, in terms of farming, in terms of um, uh, supporting the children. How we have managed here is because we have the farm and the farm is producing the food that the children need and eat. So, I don't know exactly what is your vision and dream towards that. I'd be happy if you can share and you can share ideas on that. Maybe just I have something. Mm -hmm. Maybe I have a question to Israel. Do you live with the children or you live with the See, Deskar, can you start again, please? Uh, I was asking a question to Israel. Do he live with the children or maybe the children are just uh, 
in the rural and his in the urban or in the city is he living in the cities or he lives with the children at the rural Israel are you there yes yes do you hear me now yes you hear me now have you heard my question Yes, I've heard your question. First of all, first reply, Emmanuel. Mm. Uh, my view and my ministry is now five months old. I've just got it now after inspired by some ministries. Uh, I got these children, and my view is making them adorable uh, in this nation. We want them to have a better future, as we also do. Uh, me, I'm, li I'm living in the town, I'm in the Kiana town. I'm living in the town, I don't stay with my parents. Uh, I go to guardian in the village and she is keeping them. So I just take time. I go in the village and take them food, the households, uh, and what I can manage. I have to that guardian. Uh, so I'm just Renting. I don't stand the edge. We are the ah. Uh, there like a three days in the and I. So that's how I'm. So the the sound quality is on my end is pretty poor. I assume it is for others as well. And uh, Israel, I know that I believe I saw you on Facebook, so we can connect that way. Or if you want to type in an email or something into the chat, um, then that's the way to stay connected as well. But we've been on here for almost an hour and a half now, and I know that a lot of people need to drop off or have been. Um, so just really appreciate your presence here, Israel, and wish you obviously the best. And I know we'll stay connected in various ways. I want to say thank you to everyone, uh, you know, on the call that's shown up and I'd love to sit down with each of you in my living room over meals and water and wine or whatever it is, but, um, what a beautiful group of people and beautiful hearts and you all inspire me. Emmanuel, Jessica, love you all. And uh, congratulations on your degree, Emmanuel, again. And uh, we'll look forward to another call sometime in the near future. So be well, have great days or nights, whichever you're coming into. And uh, thank you again. Thank you, Larry. Bye. Bye thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Great to see you all. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, Clay, glad you were here. Oh, oh nice. Bill, oh, Bill, you are here. Oh, bye. Yeah, I'm here. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> this is my son, Clay. Yeah. Hello, baby. Wow, how are you, Clay? Great, great introduction. Thank you very much. Wow, wow. thank you. Thank you, you bet. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. Mm. Very Randy, nice to see you. <laughs> 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 thank you, big hug. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Tom, we have to connect. Yeah.
<laughs> you know, I could just go around the room. I want to have conversations with everyone. <laughs> um, so uh, just big hugs, Chris. Thank you. Marjorie, of course. And uh, um, Lassie. Um, Randy, great to talk to you last night. All right, everyone, be well, stay safe, stay wild, go wild, Mother Earth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. 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 bye.